Okay, so today we're making another commentary that's probably going to get a lot of you guys mad. And I know that. That's kind of why I'm even touching this topic here. Because we had ourselves Scott Wheeler of The Athletic publish his top 50 prospects list earlier today. And I didn't realize, personally just how big of a deal this list was, because for the most part, I mean, come on, Scott Wheeler is one guy who likely hasn't seen every game of every prospect in existence, and therefore is just ranking these guys based off of his own personal opinion. But on all the subreddits I looked at, every individual team subreddit, I kind of go through all of them at the same time, and I think more than half of those subreddits all had this article posted onto its ranks, where the comments were all, oh, where are our prospects? What are our team's prospects like on this list, and where are they ranked? So... It says to me that the hockey community does care very much about Scott Wheeler and his overall prospects list over here, which is why we're talking about a very specific... I don't even know what I want to call this. This is an idea brought up, I guess, where you go out there and you label two guys in a ranking order that kind of puts one of them above the other. Now, just for disclaimer, I won't screenshot any of the article because it is paid for material. That's what The Athletic is. I will leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and read this yourself. But a really interesting thing about this entire piece was the ranking of the top defensemen in this list. Now, Owen Power is ranked as the number one defender because, I mean, he's the Buffalo Sabres guy, he was drafted first overall. You could really debate whether or not he should be ranked first, especially considering all the other guys like Sanderson, for example, who is ranked at like 37th overall or whatever. But the second and third defenders on the list, in order, go as follows. Brant Clark, eighth overall pick by the LA Kings in the 2021 NHL entry draft, and then you have Moritz Sider, who is ranked as the third best defender and 11th overall on the list. Sider was taken sixth overall and was seen as a really big shock when he was drafted in 2019. But a few years down the line, he became literally the best defender in the entire Swedish Hockey League as a teenager, for crying out loud. And now he is what many people would consider to being the best defenseman outside the National Hockey League. Period. Or at least that's what a lot of people think. I'm kind of one of those as well, because he was so, so good in the Swedish Hockey League for the regular BK Hockey Club. But either way, Sider is ranked 11th in terms of the overall prospect rankings. Brant Clark is 7th, and you have Owen Power, who is actually 3rd. But we're not talking about Power. I mean, look, that's another discussion for another day, I guess. Either way, though, this list provides us with a whole bunch of conversation fodder because of the rankings and where these guys are placed. I will say, though, the one thing that I wanted to stress before anybody goes out there in the comments and starts ruffling up their jimmies about this entire list here is that for the top guys, Wheeler very clearly mentions in the piece that ranks 5 to 11 are all kind of in the same tier and you could rank them amongst each other in different ways. It wouldn't be a sin to rank the guy at 11th over the guy at number 8, because they're in similar tiers. It's just, if you had to twist Wheeler's arm, you go out there and you tell him you need to place these players above one another, this is the ranking you get. Brent Clark is at 7th, Lucas Raymond is at 9th, Moritz Sider is at 11th, and you have a few other guys in there as well. So what exactly is the big deal about this Brant Clark thing? Well, Brant Clark was indeed an LA Kings draft pick who had played last year in Europe. He played the majority of his minor hockey in Ontario, where he was a really good, pivoting, offensively capable passing wizard in the Ozone who could just put up a whole bunch of points. He played with Shane Wright and Brendan Othman on the Don Mills Flyers AAA Club in Ontario there and was an absolute beast. Made his OHL debut the next season with the Barry Colts, was really good over there as a first-year player, and then he went over to Europe to spend his 2020-2021 due to the OHL not playing. In the Slovak League, Brent Clark went out there, had 15 points in 26 games played. It's a pro men's league, by the way. It's not one of the better pro men's leagues in the entire world, but it's still a pro men's league. Clark, though, as an 18-year-old player, also was a point-per-game star on Team Canada at the U18s. And it's honestly kind of funny, because the way that Clark played at the U18s, you see 7.7 .7 games played. Honestly, he could have played a lot better. Like, I don't think he had what a lot of people would say was his best possible tournament, because... 
Clark, honestly, he could have had more points if he really wanted to. That's kind of my own opinion there. But I've been a really big fan of Brand Clark because his play style kind of reminded me of Quinn Hughes earlier on in the Don Mills Flyers days. But now you're in a position where... As a top prospect in the NHL, he is ranked 7th, and in particular he is ranked ahead of Cider, which has really ticked off a good chunk of Red Wings fans. It's why I talked about it in this video at the beginning. Yeah, a lot of you guys are probably going to get mad about this, because I saw Red Wings fans freaking the F out everywhere on social media. What? How in the world is Cider ranked 11th? How is he ranked behind Power, and how is he ranked behind Clark? He is better than both of these guys today. He'll probably make the NHL right away, and he'll probably be amazing. How was he ranked behind these guys? I gotta go out there and try to give my own two cents about this, because Moritz Cider, while I do believe he is the best defenseman outside of the National Hockey League, and while I do believe he does have very good potential to being a top two minutes-crunching guy, not even just minutes-crunching guy, but a body-crushing guy who can go out there and crunch bodies, be physical, also produce points, be a shutdown presence while also being just all-around offensively capable. Moritz Sider is like that all-around guy. He kind of fits into a mold, in my opinion, where it's like, yeah, he can do it all. He's big, he's strong, he's powerful, and he's got smarts everywhere on the ice. He is just a jack-of-all-trades kind of guy who excels in all of these levels. However... If you were to ask me what does Brent Clark have that Moritz Sider doesn't, I would personally say the offensive creativity and passing pizzazz. Brent Clark is an absolute wizard, and even though Moritz Sider is more well-rounded, more physical, better defensively in my opinion, and a lot more competent playing against better competition, if you're going to go off of potential, it wouldn't surprise me if, let's say, sometime down the line, Brent Clark outscores Moritz Sider because he's at, I don't know, like 70 points or something. Like, that wouldn't really surprise me based off of the profile that I have in my mind as to what Brent Clark is as a hockey player and where he projects. And the thing about these Scott Wheeler draft rankings, not draft rankings, prospect rankings, is that he places a really big emphasis on offensive capability and offensive ceiling. Which is why you take a look at who is ranked first for defensemen, hey, it's Owen Power. A guy who, if he pans out in the way that we know he could, but in a way that's not guaranteed, he can be an absolute game changer. It's not every day you get a defenseman compared to Victor Hedman, for crying out loud, in Owen Power. It's actually every day. No, now that I think about it, yeah, there were several defensemen in the 2021 draft alone who were projected to being like headmen, like Edvinson, for example, who is on this list too, by the way, but he is all the way down there with a ranking of 24. So yeah, Red Wings fans chomp at the bit at that one, I guess, eh? But at the end of the day, you know, if you're going to go out there and talk to me in the comments saying, yeah, no, Sider's a lot better. I'd rather have Sider on my team today. I'd rather have Sider on my team in 10 years. That's fine. That's your prerogative. That is absolutely okay. This list right here is just an opinion piece done by Wheeler to go out there and try to get some controversy, conversation, stirred up in the hockey community, and by the looks of it, it seems like that's exactly what has happened here, because Kings fans, Sabres fans, Red Wings fans, fans of all the other teams that have other prospects on this list as well are all talking about this list and complaining as to why their prospects are lower than others. So, based off of offensive potential, I could understand why Wheeler has Clark over Sider and Power over all of them, because he really, really, really values offensive capability, but... If you were to ask me, Clark doesn't really have the same mobility as a Sider does. Sider can just go, he can skate with the puck, he can do some really good things. Clark, his foot speed isn't really the best, he's got some weird skating mechanics, especially around his knees, but his pivoting and his ability to steer off guys while holding onto the puck in isolation in the offensive zone, it's fantastic. He is such a good isolator of pressure in the offensive zone because his edges are fantastic. It's just mobility in a straight line is somewhat of a detriment, and a lot of Red Wings fans that I saw were bringing that up in particular as well. Oh, Brant Clark can't skate. Why is he ranked ahead of Sider? Why is he ahead of Raymond? Also, recency bias is a thing as well. A lot of the new guys in the drafts had been ranked towards the top of this list instead of other guys that had been marinating in other leagues for longer. For example, Vasily Podkoles and Vancouver Canucks guy, he's ranked like 30th, which is kind of criminal to me, but you know what? If you're talking about offensive potential, I totally understand it, but either way, talk to me in the comments what you think about the entire ranking here. Kings fans, I know you guys are really happy about this, so let me know in the 
the comments what you see in Brent Clark. Cider fans, Red Wings fans, let me know in the comments what you're thinking if your opinion has been swayed by this commentary over here because I know some people like to listen to what I have to say, others don't. They just comment what they're thinking without even watching the video, which does kind of break my heart because watch time matters on YouTube. But either way, talk to me in the comments. What do you think? Cider Clark rankings. I'll leave a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video. Ash Wilson, I and I. And bye.